Welcome, welcome, my friends, to another edition of More Bad News, brought to you, as always, by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel's Challenge, smoke Camel's for 30 days, and see for yourself what a difference Camel's can make in your life. Well, my friends, uh, what an exciting week we had. Uh, it looked for a moment like uh, Yegevne Prigozhin was going to topple Putin on the outskirts of, uh, of Moscow when he turned back. And for a moment, we could imagine Yegevne Prigozhin on nukes. Um, in case you don't know it, he makes his living for, on three continents by killing people. He runs a private army, which has waged war in Syria, Central Africa, and most recently in Ukraine. He's absolutely ruthless uh, guy. Uh, so the instability that we're witnessing in Russia resembles what happened in, uh, during the fall of the Tsarist regime in 1917 and the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. They collapsed very quickly, and both from corruption that had paralyzed the ability of the government to function either in war or in peace. From my perspective, everything is collapsing. And if we look back on the last two centuries of warfare, we really see nothing but destruction. Nothing was achieved by all the wars of imperial domination. The great historian Eric Hobsbawm described the 20th century as the most terrible century in Western history. We barely survived. So we are witnessing yet another manifestation of our collapsing civilization. Violence is rising everywhere. And as Bob Dylan sang, there's no success like failure and failure is no success at all. It's especially true when it comes to war. Well, I also recently read that uh, gun sales in the United States have risen dramatically among populations that never purchased guns or were uh, not very much purchased guns in the past, especially women and African-Americans and other minority groups. So it seems that everyone is getting ready uh, for uh, the coming instability and violence. I would urge you to consider the danger of a weapon. Uh, guns kill their owners far more often than they save them. As I mentioned last week, the National Weather Service reported recently that the El Nino conditions are present uh, and expected to gradually strengthen over the next couple of years. And the impacts were fairly dramatic and, uh, and, and quick to follow. The New York Times reported last week that tens of thousands of dead fish washed ashore in the Gulf of, uh, uh, in the Gulf, on the Gulf Coast in Texas. Um, warm water, holds less oxygen and algae blooms can exacerbate the situation, which is what happened in the Gulf. What you have in the Gulf are dead zones so the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration forecasts each year the size of these dead zones. Uh, this year, they forecast that it would be about 4,155 4, square miles of coastal waters, which is actually a little smaller than it's been in the past, uh, but it, that's not encouraging news. Not like we're moving in a, in a better direction. The Gulf dead zone is a region of the ocean where there's so little oxygen that there's almost no life beneath the surface. All the oceans are warming. And since warm water generally holds less oxygen, fish are moving to the, uh, to the north and to the south to reach cooler waters with more oxygen. This is especially true for the plankton, which are essential not only for the oxygen that we breathe, but they are the foundation of the food chain on this planet. And Scientific American reported that global populations of phytoplankton have fallen by about 40% since 1950. The uh, Carbon Brief, uh, which you can find online, uh, uh, reported on June 14th uh, that, uh, quote, uh, North Atlantic temperature anomalies, anomaly sparks concern among climate scientists. Uh, an assortment of client scientists, and uh, they wrote, uh, meteorologists and others are expressing alarm at recent changes in key climate indicators, adding that global surface air and ocean temperatures have spiked sharply in recent months, leading to extreme events such as Canada's wildfires, which are impacting the air quality here in the Midwest and in the Northeast. Uh, the point to be made here is that we are not uh, watching slow, steady increases, but we are watching a kind of weirding and spiking um, and sudden changes. Here is the point. We are rapidly raising the temperatures all over the planet. Flora and fauna all have limits to the temperatures that they can tolerate. Once those limits are exceeded, all the flora and fauna in the area so affected die. They don't die slowly. They all die at once, which is what we see with these die-offs. 
Another cause of die-offs has been the H5N1 bird flu, uh, which so far has not transferred into a global pandemic, thank God, because so far the people who have caught it that is, some human beings have very close proximity to animals, to birds with the virus, and, and it has transferred to humans, not very often, but it kills them 50% of the time. 50% of the time, if you get the H1, H5N1 uh, virus, you're gone. Uh, so we're very nervous about this um, uh, mutating to a point where it could spread easily among humans, as it did in the 1917 outbreak. The current outbreak, however, among birds is the worst in U.S. history, with more than 60 million birds having died as a result of the bird flu virus or other birds that were culled because they were exposed to the virus. 60 million birds. The same thing has happened to millions of salmon farmed in both Scotland and Chile. Sudden algae blooms suck the oxygen out of the water and millions of salmon trapped in these cages all die at once. A report last year, last week, in the bulletin of the atomic uh, bulletin of atomic scientists, reported uh, a uh, another great source of really bad. The bulletin of atomic scientists, another really great source of bad news, reported environmental hazards of uh, of farming fish around the world. Um, it's hard to visualize the amount of organic garbage that was floating on the water. Uh, the author wrote, "It was estimated uh, that in the past two weeks, more than." Uh, uh, there were enough dead salmon to fill 14 olympic size swimming pools. But over the past decade, tens of millions of salmon have died in these pens. And now we are witnessing uh, farmers having a very hard time keeping their populations of salmon from collapsing. The same thing has happened among uh, uh, people who take care of bees, bee populations, colonies uh, have been collapsing. You know, friends, I was born in 1947, and I, I've been watching a Netflix special on Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was born the same year I was. Um, I was interested to hear him describe the beatings with a belt that his father regularly administered to, uh, uh, to he and his brother, resulting in his brother's suicide in 1971. Schwarzenegger said all the children were being beaten, and I believe that that is essentially true. You had a world filled with violence, and the most innocent were the most common victims. The world that we grew up in was not a healthy place for children. The same is true today. The most vulnerable humans on this planet are the ones who suffer the most from abuse. Well, I've been watching 1950s TV commercials, and I'm amazed at all the incredible scientific advantages, advances that were made in that decade. I mean, instant coffee was one thing, but no sooner had Nescafe come out with this delicious instant coffee, which is granulated. I mean, you, you see it become a cup of delicious hot coffee instantly as they pour the, the, the boiling water. It's just beautiful. But no sooner did we get instant coffee than we got Sanka instant coffee that you could drink all day long without getting it on your nerves. And, and then came the shaving cream in a can. You, you press the can and out comes this beautiful foamy shaving cream. If you didn't see it with your own eyes, you wouldn't believe it possible. And then in 1952 came Wonder Bread, which helped little boys grow into big, strong men in eight different ways. And all you needed to grow big and strong was two slices of Wonder Bread at every meal. And I remember eating Wonder Bread with Oscar Mayer bologna, along with my Kellogg's Frosted Flakes as a part of a healthy, delicious diet. And then I grew up a little older, I started smoking camels. My friends, when more doctors smoked camels, our future was filled with promise. So take the camels challenge. Let's return to the good old days when we still had a future. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, I wanna wish everybody a, uh, a good week next week. Let's, uh, let's stay safe. And uh, I'll be back uh, hopefully next week with more bad news.